about to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for Hi guys and welcome back to my channel Or if you are new here, welcome My name is Vicky and on this channel I do lots and lots of food based content I do meals of the week, shopping hauls, cook with me So today I've got 5 easy slow cooker recipes I absolutely love my slow cooker There is nothing better than spending a little bit of time in the morning Preparing your meal and then sticking it all in the slow cooker and just leaving it until the end of the day when you have to add a few finishing touches and then your meal is ready and at this time of year I love all the hearty warm comforting autumny foods so I'm not really a recipe follower but these meals are really really simple and if I have loosely based them on a recipe I will leave that link down below I will also list all the ingredients I use because a lot of them I've converted over from like US ounces into grams and things like that and I've made all of them suitable for a family of four other than the last one which is probably more suited to a family of six with leftovers just because I had a lot more chicken to use up so that's the smoked paprika chicken so I hope you enjoy this video and you will stick around if you do let's have a look at what we've made for our first meal we're going to be making a beef stroganoff now when I heard the title I thought this was going to be really complicated but it's so so simple and really delicious so the first thing we're going to do is heat a little bit of olive oil in our pan and start to sear our beef this step is optional, you don't have to sear the beef, but in my opinion, it does make the flavor so much more intense. And it also locks in a lot of the moisture into the beef. So to our beef, we're gonna add some finely sliced mushrooms. Again, you can leave these out if you don't like mushrooms and replace it with some different veg if you want. I think broccoli would go quite nicely in this, or you could just chop some carrots, but we've decided to go for the traditional mushrooms. You're gonna let these brown together and then add some seasonings. To this you're going to add your salt, some black pepper, some garlic powder and some onion powder. Next up you're going to add one teaspoon of a herb of your choice. The recipe that I've loosely followed and that I'll link down below did use dried dill but I decided to use fennel, it's one of my favourite herbs, it goes amazingly with beef and it's really readily available. So you could use sage or thyme or rosemary but we've chosen to go with fennel. Now I've popped that in we're just going to let this brown up a little bit before we're going to add the rest of our ingredients and pop it in our slow cooker. So now everything's started to brown, I'm just going to go in with my Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Some Dijon mustard. And one beef stock pot. We're then going to mix all this together and transfer it into our slow cooker. You're then going to pop your lid on and cook it on low for four hours. When your four hours is up, you're just going to mix a little bit of corn flour with some water just to thicken up the sauce. Then we're going to pop the lid back on and leave it for another hour and when you take the lid off, the sauce will be nice and thick. So once my hour is up, I'm just going to cook my pasta that I'm going to serve with the dish. So I've just boiled some water and added my pasta shells to it. And whilst this is cooking, this is when you want to add your yogurt into your beef and just leave it to cook for the same amount of time that the pasta takes and then it'll all be ready together at the end. When your pasta is ready and drained, you're gonna add it into the slow cooker and give it a good stir so that all the sauce coats the pasta. And then your dish is practically done. All I'm gonna do is pop this in a bowl now and I'm just gonna to top it with a little bit of the extra Greek yogurt. You can always add some parsley or some herbs with it. You could also serve it with veg, but this was quite a big meal in itself. So we just had it as it was and it was absolutely amazing. For my next meal I'm going to be making creamy cheese chicken with mash and this one requires no pre-cooking. I'm just laying my chicken breast straight into my slow cooker. To my chicken I'm going to add some salt, some garlic powder and some black pepper. You can use fresh garlic if you'd rather in any of these recipes but I find powdered works just as well. So I'm going to sprinkle on my ingredients, then I'm going to add two tins of this condensed chicken soup. I find this is cheapest in places like Home Bargains and B&M, you can usually get it for about 49p. 
Then I'm going to add one tin of water and a chicken stock pot and then I'm going to give it a good mix together. You could make this sauce beforehand before adding it to the chicken if you wanted to but I don't see the point in making more washing up if you don't have to. It's all going to mix together in the end and I just didn't want another bowl to wash. And once you've mixed everything together you're just going to pop your lid on and cook on low for about five hours. So after five hours I'm just going to remove my chicken from the sauce and give it a good mix. This gives me a chance to be able to shred the chicken up and add the cream cheese into the sauce. So once you've removed all your chicken you're going to take your carton of cream cheese and put the whole thing into the slow cooker. You're then going to give it a really good whisk until it's nice and smooth. Next I'm just going to shred the chicken with two forks, you can see it's so tender it is literally just falling apart. So I'm leaving the chunks quite big, I don't want it too stringy and I'm just going to pop it back into the slow cooker into the sauce. This next step is completely optional but we absolutely love fresh tarragon in anything chickeny so I've just got some sprigs of tarragon and a pair of scissors and I'm just chopping some into the dish. I also had some spinach left over in the fridge and any time I can add spinach to anything I will do so I did a big handful of spinach but make sure you add this right at the very end because otherwise it will cook down to nothing and lose all its nutrients. Once I've mixed all this together I'm just going to pop the lid back on and leave it to cook for as long as it takes me to boil my potatoes for my mash and then I'm going to serve it all together. So we've served ours with mashed potato, you can have anything you like with it, rice, pasta, you can have it on jacket potatoes and I decided that any leftovers we had from this dish I'm actually going to use them in like a chicken lasagna. We all really really enjoyed this dish, it's very warming and perfect for this time of year, a real comfort food. So for our next meal I'm going to be doing a whole chicken, potato and carrots in the slow cooker. Now I didn't specifically buy a chicken in a bag to go for this recipe. It was in the reduced section so I got it because it was on offer and at the end of the day it is just a chicken in a bag so it doesn't really make any difference. So what I'm going to do to start with is peel and chop some potatoes and just lay those in the bottom of my slow cooker. Next I'm going to add some peeled and chopped carrots and then I'm going to add some garlic cloves. All I'm doing is peeling these and putting them in whole. They'll end up really really sweet and they will disintegrate. So next I'm just going to season with some salt and pepper and then I'm going to add my stock. Now you can use the stock pots that I have been using in my previous recipes but I've got some frozen stock out of my freezer. Anytime I cook a joint of meat I always save the leftover stock and pop it in a ziplock bag but you can just make up stock using a stock cube or using a stock pot as I've been using previously. So I'm just going to add this into my slow cooker and then I'm going to pop my chicken on the top of that. So whenever I put a chicken in the slow cooker I always make sure I put it breast side down because the fattiest part of the chicken is at the bottom and the breast is the drier part. So what you want is all your moisture to cook through your chicken and through the breast out of the bottom, not vice versa. Also if you get any of the slight charring you sometimes get when you use a slow cooker to cook joints, it will be on the bottom of the chicken and that's the skin you're going to remove and not use anyway, rather than on the dry breast at the top. So I'm just going to play a bit of Tetris, I probably could do with a bigger slow cooker but I do make it all fit eventually and then I'm going to pop the lid on and cook it on low for about six hours. So when that time was up you can see that everything is cooking nicely, the potatoes are softening, the chicken was literally falling apart. So what I do now is remove the chicken from its juices and take that out and then I'm going to add some gravy granules to the sauce to thicken it up. You could always use corn flour to thicken your sauce but I wanted the extra flavour that the gravy granules would add. So now all that's left to do is remove the skin and bone from the chicken and serve it up. You haven't got to make any gravy. The stuffing was actually inside the chicken. I didn't realise at the time it was a chicken and stuffing chicken. And this is another really simple comfort food. So the next meal we're going to be making is turkey cranberry meatballs. This takes a little more prep but it really is worth it. Now I'm using turkey mince just to form into balls to make my meatballs. You can use anything you want, any meat you want. You could always use frozen meatballs that are like pre-done if you wanted to. You just need to adjust the cooking time a little bit and take into account the liquid. So I'm not adding any seasoning because the sauce has a lot of flavour to it and the meatballs really don't need it. So once I've rolled them all into balls, I'm going to heat up some olive oil in my pan and brown off my meatballs. 
This step is really important if you're making fresh meatballs because they will fall apart otherwise and you will end up with a big mess. So after about five minutes each side, you can see that they're starting to go a little bit brown and you can move them about a bit more without them falling apart. So next I'm gonna to start to make my sauce. To make our sauce, we're gonna use some chili ketchup. I'm using the Crucials Make. There is a Heinz variety. There's lots and lots of chili ketchups out there. This one isn't particularly spicy, but you could always omit this and use barbecue sauce if you would prefer. And I've listed all the quantities for this recipe down in the description box, plus I've linked the original recipe that I based it on. So we're gonna use the same pan that we cooked our meatballs in, that way all the juices won't go to waste and it really adds to the flavor of the sauce. So I'm gonna add in my chili ketchup, some orange juice, one jar of cranberry sauce. Next up is some brown sugar. This is quite a sweet sauce, but the meatballs do balance it out in the end. So if you like that kind of thing, this is definitely for you. Next, I'm just gonna season with some salt and pepper, and then we're going to simmer that and mix it all together until it makes a nice combined sauce. You want to slowly add your meatballs to the slow cooker without jiggling them around too much. They will firm up after cooking. So I'm just pouring my sauce over the top until the meatballs are completely covered. Then I pop my lid on and cook these on low for four hours. And four hours later you can see you can now stir your meatballs and bash them around and they're completely firm and aren't going to fall apart. The best thing about this recipe is they do not dry out at all. So depending on how thick you want your sauce you can add a corn flour and water mixture to thicken it up. We wanted a little bit of a thicker sauce because we served ours with rice and broccoli. You can have it runnier if you prefer, it's completely up to you. But if you do want to add some corn flour, just mix it with water and add it in whilst you're cooking your rice or your pasta or your mash. It doesn't take very long and you've got this lovely thick sauce. Like I said, we served ours with plain boiled rice and broccoli. And this was another huge hit in our house. It's very sweet, but the meatballs do take away from that, so it works perfectly in the end. So for my last recipe, I'm gonna start off by putting some unpeeled washed red potatoes into my slow cooker. I've just diced them up into about an inch square. To this, I'm gonna add some chopped onion, a chopped red pepper, then I'm gonna add some chicken thighs. Now I've just seasoned these in some onion powder, some garlic powder, some smoked paprika, salt and pepper, and some Italian seasoning. And I've given them a good mix around. I will leave the quantities in the description box, but I'm just gonna lay these over the top of my potatoes, onion, and peppers. Next up, I'm gonna add one tin of peeled plum tomatoes and one cup of chicken stock that I've just made with boiling water and a chicken stock cube. Now this is probably going to take about eight hours on low to cook because there's quite a lot of ingredients in there and I want the potatoes to be really soft and the chicken thighs to fall apart. But halfway through cooking, so about four hours in, I took my lid off and gave everything a bit of a stir and then added the rest of my ingredients. We've got some Worcestershire sauce. I've added some salt and some black pepper. We're gonna add some more smoked paprika and then some cumin powder. Then we're gonna give it a good stir all together and pop our lid back on and leave it on low for at least another four hours or until your potatoes are really nice and soft and your chicken is cooked. So this is the chicken all done and the best thing about this dish is there's nothing else to prepare. It's all in one pot and I'm just gonna dish it up and add a little bit of grated cheese. This is another big hit in our house and I love the fact that you don't have any waste because the next day I took whatever juice was left and I found a carrot, a potato and some mushrooms that needed using up in my fridge and I just chopped them up and popped them into the liquid. There was enough liquid left to make two bowls of this soup and Steve and I had it for lunch so I don't put anything to waste. If you've got any liquid left, make sure you use it up either in a soup or pop it in a freezer bag and you can use it as your stock for the next time you make this kind of dish. So I really hope you enjoyed that video and it's given you some ideas of what to put in your slow cooker. If you've got any questions at all, just comment down below and I will get back to you. I usually answer pretty much every one of the comments. Go and check us out on Instagram. It is the Folger family. You can also DM me on there if you want to and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already and I will see you in our next video. This is what we waited for.